guys, Julie Motlag here. I have an OG niche fragrance to review with you guys today. She is the bomb. She started it all. I don't care what anybody says. Let's get to it. So this fragrance was created in 1912 and I would argue that she is the original niche fragrance. Certainly the first multi-floral bouquet fragrance ever created. And she is Calca Fleur by the House of Hubigant. So before I get into reviewing Calca Fleur, I wanted to talk to you guys about my kind of top seven or eight fragrances that are my signature fragrances. Um, just to give you a little bit of an idea of what I like and what my tastes are. Um, I'm not gonna review these, but I'll show you which ones are, are are the ones that I wear most frequently and uh, I'm always reaching for. So they're mostly spring and and summer scents, um, but I do have one here that I absolutely love that I've been wearing all winter, and that is um, Italica by Zerjoff. Uh, absolutely gorgeous, special scent. I love the almond. I love the milky, powdery scent. Um, I love those kinds of scents in general. This is just a fantastic, you know, winter fragrance. The next one on my list is really my number one go-to fragrance right now. Definitely a, a, an all-year fragrance, but I will we be wearing her during the spring and the summer, and that is Roja 51. I just met her probably three or four months ago, and the raspberries, the vanilla, everything in this fragrance is just so well blended. It is so smooth and perfect, classy, refined. I absolutely love her. Um, and right now I only have the uh, 1.7, but I am definitely considering buying a larger bottle because I definitely see myself wearing this quite a bit. Next up, I would say is the um, House of EBK, and this is Moonstone and Tuberose. Great um, scent for spring and fall. She's just classy and beautiful. I definitely get some 51 vibes here too. Um, different scents, but some similarities, and I love this one as well. The next one on my list is one of my recent finds from EBK as well, and that's, um, this one is Aquamarine and Powder. Um, very lavender heavy, um, powdery notes, which I love, and the scent just has such great performance. I love it so much, um, and I have been wearing it quite a lot. And then the next scent I have that I, I do wear quite frequently during the, the spring and summer is um, Maison Francis de Kirk de Jean's Pluriel. It's, it's kind of an Irish scent. It's very bright, very, it's got a little powdery note to it, um, but it is just so pretty. It's such a pretty scent. So I love wearing this one. As you can tell, I got the big bottle and it's, it's, Halfway done. <laughs> um, the next scent that I absolutely love is Delina. So I know you guys are probably really familiar with Delina. I absolutely love her. Um, always a compliment getter. Easy, easy reach. Um, and then lastly, this one's a little bit different um, because this one has um, a huge beach vibe. And that is Hibiscus Palm by Erin. If you don't have this one for the summer, you need to go get it ASAP. It is to me like the perfect summer scent. It's got the suntan lotion vibes. It's got the um, tropical feel to it. Like this is a must have on any summer vacation to the beach, to a tropical island, wherever. I just love it. So with that said, now you kind of understand what my tastes are and what I reach for right now um, in, my, in my top seven or eight. So let's review Calcaflor. So let me tell you a little bit about how I met and fell in love with Calcaflor. Um, I was about 17 or 18 years old um, and I was in a, in a group of people who went running together. And uh, one of the ladies who I jogged with 
wore it. And I used to always think that she smelled so amazing and pretty and classy and just really feminine. And I, I just always wanted to be next to her whenever we would go jogging because I enjoyed her fragrance so much. And by the way, I have always been addicted to fragrances. I mean, the earliest I can remember is nine or 10 years old. And I was begging for a bottle of perfume. And I think my first one was Calvin Klein Eternity. And uh, and so by the time that I found Calcaflor, um, it was a little bit of a more mature scent for maybe a 17 or 18 year old, but I loved it nonetheless. And uh, it was at the time for me a bit expensive, so I um, it was it was a luxury for me to have a bottle of it. And since then, I've gone through probably 20, 25 bottles in my lifetime. But um, that's how I was, you know, a, introduced to Calcaflor and really just fell in love with it. And every time I wore it, I felt like a princess. I felt special. I felt just pretty. Um, classy. I, I just, I couldn't get enough of it. It was just one of those fragrances for me that when I sprayed it on, it just changed my entire day. And there's just such an incredible history behind this fragrance. And I didn't know that when I first started wearing it. Um, I really just, you know, wore it because I liked it. But come to find out, you know, it was the original niche fragrance um, created in 1912 by the House of Hubigant, which was a small store in Paris. And, um, you know, Marie Antoinette wore it. As a matter of fact, when she was going to the guillotine, she had a vial of it in her brassiere and she wanted to smell it um, when the unthinkable happened to her. So um, she loved it and come to find out, and I didn't know this when I started wearing it, um, but I, I I love Princess Diana, and as we probably all do, but um, come to find out she wore this on her wedding day, and there's like a story of where she spilled the fragrance on her dress right before her wedding. Um, I also wore it on my wedding day, of course, and I would say this has been my signature scent for, um, you know, the last 20 years. And um, I wear other fragrances, of course, there's so many beautiful ones out there, but she is just the one that I would say is me. This is my fragrance. And so I really wanted to do a review of her because, you know, she's such a great niche fragrance. And, you know, even though it's, it's, it's an older fragrance, it's not one of those fragrances that you smell it and you're like, oh gosh, that's like my grandmother wore that or, and maybe she did, but uh, it's it's not one of those fragrances you're like, oh, that's, that's out of date because it's not. And I just, I want to let everyone know how great this fragrance is because it, it's, it's just so beautiful. And I think it's so understated and nobody talks about it enough, but it is to me the best spring summer fragrance i wear it all year but it is such a great fragrance nobody talks about it enough in my opinion um but you know through the years i think in 1985 they did a reformulation of this fragrance and it changed it a little bit it became uh, a little more green at the top which i'm going to get into the notes in just a minute but um you know it's just it's it inspired so many other fragrances so this was one of the first true floral bouquets, um, and it really smells like a bouquet, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, but it's it's uh, it inspired like it's got the aldehydes in it, so it was um, uh, it number five supposedly was the first aldehyde fragrance. That is not true. It was her. It was this one right here. And this inspired the fragrance Beautiful by Estee Lauder. So if you can kind of think of what beautiful smells like, there are some similarities um, from this fragrance to that one. So give you kind of an idea of what it smells like. But anyway, let's get into the notes and let's talk about how it smells and the performance and kind of the, the fragrance life cycle when you spray it. Okay, so let's get into what this fragrance smells like. I would say that... If you are going to judge this fragrance by what it smells like when you first spray it, you're not gonna like it. It is very green 
and a bit animalic and sharp. So the top, like top notes you get are going to be green right out of the gate. So you, ha you definitely have to give it just a few minutes to settle in. It's one of those fragrances where you're going to spray it on um, probably 15, 20 minutes before you leave the house and, and it's going to be a little sharp in the beginning. So you definitely get, definitely get the green notes and it starts to, it starts to settle in pretty quickly. Um, and then I think you really get the, the bergamot and you get the orange blossom, um, and the lemon right off the top. That's kind of what first stands out before you start getting to the florals. And this is such a complex scent that you can definitely smell the different florals in it um, and the different notes, but it will also kind of take you on a journey. And it's, it's very, very, very complex. Um, but then it gets to this just absolutely stunning place that is very... Um, the, the dry down, I think, is very soapy and and a little powdery, but in not in a sickingly way. So it, like it's not too soapy, not too powdery. It is just perfect, and it is exactly what people like. When I read reviews about this fragrance, which I do every now and again, um, just to see what people are saying about it, to see if people are wearing it, if it's popular. I always enjoyed wearing it because I was the only person I knew that wore it, which I really love to, to smell unique, right? And so when I go and I read the reviews, people always say, like, I hated it when I first sprayed it on, immediately dismissed it, and then came back to, a, you know, a piece of paper that they sprayed it on or, you know, maybe an article of clothing um, or left it on themselves for a while, and then they immediately changed their opinion and loved it after the dry down. So as this one is drying down, so then you start getting kind of the the rose, the jasmine, uh, you get ylang ylang. Um, so interesting enough, I get some heliotrope as well. I can definitely smell that. And the orchids, kind of the sandalwood starts coming out. There's oak moss and you can smell that kind of coming through as well. And then as as the dry down is, is really starting to come through and I have, I have the other one here with the actual dry down that I sprayed like an hour or so ago. And now like, it's amazing. Now I start getting like the ambers, the musk, there's some tonka bean you get there. And now it's kind of settled into that like really beautiful, powdery, kind of a soapy, clean, um, a little aromatic smell. It's just, it's so gorgeous. And you, you know, you could argue that it's, you're fresh out of the shower, but then you went walking in the garden and you smell like flowers too. Um, it's, it's not quite so soapy that I would say fresh out of the shower, but it does have that kind of fresh vibe to it. Um, so it's just, everything is blended so well. It's got over 15,000 fresh flowers in the oil that it takes to make one bottle of this fragrance. So totally stunning, right? I mean, anything that has that amount of flowers in it and is blended this well and performs as well and lasts as well, it's a masterpiece to me, which is probably why you can still find it on the shelves in Saks Fifth Avenue and Neiman Marcus and Harrods. It's it's a great fragrance. It's just wonderful. Um, so when I wear this, when I spray it on, obviously, you know, you get the you get the green and the animalic in the beginning. But after it settles in and becomes its scent, um, it, you, you can smell it all day long. It lasts on you. It lasts on your clothes. Um, it's not nauseating. It is not overpowering. It doesn't, you know, smell um, too mature. Um, it's, it's just pretty. It's very, very pretty and classy. You can tell that it is a very well done fragrance just by smelling it on somebody. And I would say that its performance is... Um, the, the longevity is great, obviously, 
Um, but as far as the sillage, I would say you have this beautiful little bubble around you that is just, you know, this wonderful smell um, that this fragrance gives off. It's just, it's your little bubble. Others can smell it when you walk by. You can smell yourself. Um, it's That's one of the reasons I like it. If I'm gonna invest in a fragrance, um, and this one I've probably invested in heavily because I've had so many bottles over the years, but if you're gonna invest in something, I, I personally wanna like at least be able to smell myself. Um, maybe not all the time and not too strong, but I wanna be able to smell the fragrance that I'm wearing um, on my clothes later. Like it's it's my scent. Um, and, and that's what I really like about this one is it does give you that. Um, you will, and now, now it, like I smell like the very soft, this is, this is the fragrance I love, the dry down. It's just, I cannot get enough of it. I can't, I cannot smell it enough um, because it's so beautiful. Uh, I mean, I love 51, Roja 51. I think that's a beautiful fragrance. Um, I think it's comparable to this. I think it's also, not necessarily in the way that it smells, but comparable as far as quality, uh, how pretty and classy it is. Um, number five, I, I would compare it just, not that it smells the same, a little bit of the aldehydes, but I think that it's comparable in that it's a classic, a true classic. Anyway, I love this fragrance. I, I really hope that um, by listening to this review, you will go out and give it a try. And remember, if you do try it, spray it on, go walk around the store, um, really give it a chance to dry down and become what it's supposed to be, which is this beautiful, classy floral, floral fragrance. There's a, re there's a reason that Princess Diana loved it. There's a reason why I love it. You know, it's, it's, it's just that great. It's amazing. So I hope you guys go out and try it. If you have any questions, comment below, happy to answer and have a great day. Bye everyone.